Let us give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds. He satisfies our thirst and fills us with good things. Let us come before God in prayer. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for your great love for all humanity. We see your love expressed in the lives of your chosen people recorded in the scriptures. Abraham, Sarah, Joseph and Moses, Hannah and Ruth, Peter and James and John, Priscilla and Aquila, to name but a few. We also see your love expressed in our own lives and in the lives of your chosen people, the church in this world. And we see your love expressed in welcome to the prodigal, the outcast and the stranger, desiring for them to come home and find their place with you. Your love, O Lord, is steadfast and endures forever. But our love for you and our love for one another is so often shallow and fickle. We do not deserve your love because of our unfaithfulness and our sinful ways. And yet you lavish your love upon us in the person of Jesus Christ, your Son and our Saviour, who sacrificed himself for the sins of the world so that we might find forgiveness and restoration in him. We give thanks this morning for his great act of saving love towards us and turn to him in silence to confess our own sinfulness, to receive his forgiveness and his cleansing from all our wrongdoing. Thank you, Jesus, for your power over sin and for your great mercy and love towards us. Help us uh, together as your people, as we join together in the words you taught your followers to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who've trespassed against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, welcome to worship in First Oma this morning, whether you're present with us here in the church, in the Rowan Hall overflow or watching online or listening to our sermon line later on today. How good it is that we can join together to worship God at this time of uncertainty and social distancing. As we did last week, uh, we're going to greet one another uh, with a friendly wave. So if you'd like to turn around to the people around you and just uh, wave to them, if you can spot the camera up at the top there, wave to the camera, wave to Dara over on the right and uh, welcome one another in the name of the Lord to this service of worship. I have a few announcements that I'd like to uh, make today. Uh, the first one um, is in relation to uh, listening with Emma. Uh, at the moment, we're not running our jigsaw and blast activities um, because we want to have the Rowan Hall available uh, for overflow. And we're also conscious as well um, of parents and their commitments with their children during the week. So Emma is doing a little slot at 10 o'clock on our Youth and Families Facebook page for children who would normally go to jigsaw. So if you haven't already um, tuned into that as a parent, then please uh, do so and the children then will have a Sunday school lesson and an activity. Uh, we're hoping to tie it in with the service as well um, each week. So please join in for that uh, on the Youth and Families page at 10 o'clock every Sunday morning. It will then be available uh, throughout the rest of the day and into the week if you want to catch up on it at a later time. And then each Monday to Wednesday, Emma will also be posting some uh, teen topic discussions for our teenagers to help them think through the things of faith in these days. And they will arrive um, onto the Youth and Families page as well uh, for the teenagers to use Monday to Wednesday. 
And then this Wednesday, uh, 16th of September, we returned to online meetings. Uh, during lockdown, we spent uh, a lot of time on Zoom and on various different social media platforms over the summer. That might have eased a little, but this Wednesday night, it's hotting up again. So there are three things that you can choose to watch um, online or to join in online. The first one, if you're a teenager, is the midweek hangout on Zoom, uh, which will take place at 7 um, Emma will be hosting this, uh, so if you have any teenagers who would like to join in with that, then they are to email her at emma at firstoma.com and she'll give them the password uh, to log in to the Zoom. And Emma and Rachel will be the leaders on that midweek hangout on Wednesday evening. Uh, then if you're a leader in the congregation here, the Presbyterian Church in Ireland is hosting a webinar and uh, entitled Opening Up to God. So if you're a leader of an organisation, if you're one of the elders or on the committee, uh, then there's an opportunity for you to join into that webinar at eight o'clock. The link for it is available on our Facebook page and we'll also put it onto our website for you. And then Oma Church's Forum, it's Good Relations Week this coming week, and unfortunately they're not able to gather people together, uh, but they wanted to put on um, an event for people to uh, join in, and it's Hope Beyond Covid, um, and the speakers are the two bishops of Armagh, and that's going to take place on Zoom at 7 o'clock, and if you'd like to join in to that, then you need to email Pauline in the Good Relations Unit, and again the details of that are available on our Facebook page and will be available on our website. So three online meetings on Wednesday night. If you have nothing uh, else to do on Wednesday evening, choose uh, one of those. Unfortunately, if you're not a teenager, you can't go to the midweek hangout, which I think might be, um, I'm going to say one of the most exciting, but maybe I shouldn't say that, but uh, perhaps it'll be good fun. So I hope that our teenagers join in with that. The following Wednesday then, the session are holding their uh, meeting um, to review progress for the service, how the services have gone in September and we're meeting on Wednesday the 23rd of September to plan the way forward. Following that meeting then we'll have a meeting uh, with leaders to look at opening up our organisations and when that might be possible. I know that's a lot of announcements and you don't have uh, an announcement sheet to take home with you but the information is available on our website and on our Facebook page if you're able to look those up. Finally, can I encourage you in the week ahead to continue to pray earnestly for an end of this pandemic. Pray for wisdom and guidance for our political leaders and for safety and well-being in our community. I'm delighted that Daryl is able to play with us again, for us again this week and he will lead us in the hymn Love Divine. Feel free to sing along quietly with him or just listen as he sings. The words will appear on the screen. Love divine, a love's excelling joy of heaven to earth come down. Fix in us thy humble dwelling, all thy faithful mercies crown. Serve you as I hold 
Unfortunately, the Bibles in the pews had to be removed, um, so hopefully the words uh, for scripture reading will appear on the screen, um, and they are taken from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 to 14. So let us listen to God's word. Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But among you there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality, or of any kind of impurity, or of greed, because these are improper for God's holy people. Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. For of these you can be sure, no immoral, impure, or greedy person, such a person is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things, God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore, do not be partners with them. For you are once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. For the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. But everything exposed by light becomes visible, and everything that is illuminated becomes a light. This is why it is said, wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine in you. We thank God for his word to us this morning, and we turn now to him in prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, we give thanks for your love for us. We hear command to love one another. And so we bring to you our prayer for our world. We pray, O Lord, for all who will gather to worship you this Lord's Day, whether here in Oma or further afield. We ask that you would pour out your blessing upon them, that you would strengthen them to serve you faithfully in the church, and that you would fill them with love and compassion towards others. We especially pray this morning for those who live in poverty, as a result of economic deprivation, natural disaster, unfair governance, or debilitating sickness. Shine your light on the darkness caused by exploitation, injustice, hatred, and all that is evil or wrong in this world, and cause your people to walk in the way of love, showing your mercy and grace, and bringing hope, healing, and wholeness to our broken and fragile world. We pray, Lord, for those who are anxious or worried and those whose thoughts are darkened by mental health issues. In your loving kindness, shine your light into each of their situations, bringing peace, comfort and hope for a brighter tomorrow. We pray for all who work to improve the mental health and well-being of others, psychiatrists, nurses, auxiliaries, social workers, counsellors and befrienders. Grant them strength and courage and insight as they seek to support and help those with mental health concerns and their families. We continue to pray for our world and the impact that the coronavirus pandemic has had on us all. Shine your light on those working to deliver a vaccine, 
those caring for the dying, the sick and the recovering, and for those leading and guiding us through this difficult and challenging time for our society, our nation and our world. We pray for those in our own community and across the world who do not yet know the Saviour's love for them and help us, your people, to shine your light and to walk in your ways of love that others may be drawn to discover your love for themselves. We give thanks for your goodness to us and we ask that you would receive the offerings that we bring to you today, offerings of money and time and talent for the building of your kingdom here in this place. These prayers we offer in our Saviour's name. Amen. As we think about our Saviour's love for us, uh, we're going to listen to a solo, Here is Love Vast as the Ocean, sung for us uh, by Chris Crawford. Here is love. Here is love, vast as the ocean, love in kindness as the flood. When the prince of life our ransom shed for us his precious blood. Who his love will not remember, who can cease to sing his praise, he can never be forgotten through our times eternal days. On the mount of crucifixion, fountains open deep and wide. Through the floodgates of God's mercy, flowed a vast and gracious tide. Grace and love, like mighty rivers, poured incessant from above. And hands, peace and perfect justice kissed our guilty world in love. Let me all thy love accepting, love the ever all my days. Let me seek thy kingdom only and my life be to thy praise. Thou alone shalt be my glory, nothing be in the world I see. Thou hast cleansed and sanctified me, thou thyself hast set me free. In thy truth thy dost direct me, by thy spirit through thy word, and thy grace my need is meeting, as I trust in thee, my Lord. Of thy fullness thou art pouring, thy great love and power on me. Without measure, full and boundless, drawing out my heart to thee. Thank you to Chris for that uh, beautiful solo. The theme for our services over the next number of weeks is giving thanks. Each week we'll put a thanksgiving note in the jar to thank God for something in particular. If you would like to join in with this task, you're more than welcome to do so. You can have your own little jar at home. And as you think of things throughout the week to give thanks to God for, then you can write it down and jot it uh, on a piece of paper and pop that piece of paper into the jar. Then hopefully come Harvest Thanksgiving, we'll be able to have uh, jars of Thanksgiving um, around the pulpit here as a sign um, of our heartfelt thanks for all that God has done for us. So this week I've brought a note with me for my Thanksgiving jar. 
And this week, we're going to give thanks for Christ's love for us. Christ's love for us. Thanking God for Jesus Christ and all that he has done for us. In our passage that we read earlier from Ephesians 5 and verse 2, we read that Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. Christ's love for us is a sacrificial love, a love which costs, a love which hurts, and a love which gives its all to the other person. If love does not cost us anything, then I wonder if it really is love in the first place. Listen to this tale of sacrificial love. A chicken and a pig <coughs> were walking down the street and they saw some poor children who looked as if they hadn't eaten anything in days. Moved with compassion, the chicken said to the pig, I have an idea. Let's give those children a nice breakfast of bacon and eggs. The pig thought about the chicken's suggestion and said, well, for you that would make, mean a small sacrifice in giving one of the eggs that you lay. But for me, it would mean complete sacrifice to ensure the children had bacon on their plates. The chicken, you see, could lay an egg and give it away to others and still go on enjoying life. It wouldn't really cost the chicken that much. But the pig, on the other hand, had to give himself completely in order to provide food for others. That's what sacrificial love is about. It's about denying ourselves to give to others. To dying for ourselves, we live uh, for others. And we see that often in the world, don't we? Uh, children who are living in poverty, they will have something on their table, if at all possible. Why? Because their parents will sacrifice their own food to ensure that their children have food to eat themselves. That's sacrificial love. It's denying self in order to help someone else. And that's the love that Jesus has for us. His love is not a half-hearted love or a conditional love dependent upon us or dependent upon the cost himself. He loves us wholeheartedly, unconditionally and sacrificially. His love knows no bounds and is not dependent upon us loving him in return. His love, you see, is not based on our love for him. In fact, the scriptures tell us that whilst we were sinners, separated from God, alienated from him, Christ willingly in love sacrificed himself on the cross for our sake. As the Gospel of John says, greater love hath no man than to lay down his life for his friends. But Jesus did more than that. He laid down his life for his enemies, for sinful humanity like you and me. His love was totally unconditional and completely sacrificial, and it cost him his very life. Jesus gave himself up for us. Why did he do that? He did it because he loves us, and he wanted to save us from the consequences of our sinfulness. We don't deserve to be loved by a holy, righteous God because before him we are unholy, we are sinful and we are unworthy. Yet he still loves us unconditionally. We are sinful people. It is part of who we are. It is part of our sinful nature. We fail to worship God for who he is the sovereign over our lives. We fail to put our trust in him wholeheartedly, instead trusting in ourselves. We too often seek our own good rather than seeking the good of another. We delight in spreading gossip and scandal. 
We think nothing of stepping on another's toes in order to succeed in life. We seek to gratify our own needs and our own desires, regardless of whether it is right or what impact it will have on others. Sin corrupts and destroys. It brings sorrow and sadness. Human relationships are destroyed through acts of unfaithfulness, acts of anger and acts of jealousy. Lives are shattered and communities destroyed because of hatred and injustice and greed. The sin that is in this world and the sin that lives and resides in us deserves to be punished and destroyed. We would all say that if we are impacted by it. But the problem is that sin lives in us and as a result we are destined to be separated from a holy God. But that isn't how we were created to be. We were created to live eternally with God. But our sinfulness created that barrier between us. Death separates us from God. But in his loving kindness, he has provided a solution to our sinfulness and its consequences. And that solution is our saviour, Jesus Christ, who loves us unconditionally and sacrificially, who was willing to offer himself as a fragrant offering to God in our place. Our lives, if they were to be viewed by God, are nothing but a heap of rotting rubbish. They would create a stench before the Holy God. But Jesus' life, on the other hand, is a pure and sinless, fragrant offering to God. Jesus lived the perfect life, a life of love and kindness and compassion and goodness. He brought healing and restoration and hope to all whom he met. He lived the perfect life and was willing to become the perfect sacrifice for our sake so that we could earn the right to receive forgiveness of sin. He gave his life as a fragrant offering so that we could find life through faith in him. That is sacrificial love in all its glory. So what is our response to that sacrificial love of Jesus Christ? What is your response? What is my response? We can choose to turn our back on that love which Jesus offers to us and continue to live a life of selfish sinfulness. Or we can respond with heartfelt repentance and thanksgiving for all that Jesus has done for us on the cross. When we accept Christ's unconditional love for us, when we accept that he had to die for our sins and that we receive forgiveness through faith in him, then our lives will be transformed. As Christians, as people who trust and believe in the saving love of Jesus Christ and in the forgiveness of sin that he offers to us, we are called to follow him, to turn our backs on our former ways of sinful living and instead, as the Apostle tells the Ephesians, to walk in the way of love. To walk in the way of love demonstrated to us by Jesus Christ, that love which is a costly love. It will mean laying down our selfish wants and desires to follow God's will for our lives. It will mean putting our, uh, other people's needs before our own. It will mean loving others, whether or not they've done anything to deserve our love. Why would we want to do that? We want to show love because we have received the overwhelming love of God in Jesus Christ. And when we feel that love, it will overflow in love towards others and in joyful thanksgiving to God. We will want to love and serve him. We will desire to share his love across the world. It will be our thank offering to him for all that he has done for us. So as we walk in the way of love in this world, we will transform not just ourselves, 
but our world around us. Paul tells us that we are to shine our light as children of God, to shine Christ's light into the darkness of this world. We all know that when we switch on a light, it dispels the darkness of the room. And sinful deeds are often done in darkness and in secret. The betrayal of a marriage vow, the gossiping behind another's back, the sleight of hand to take what doesn't belong to us. Sinful deeds destroying people's lives and destroying our world. And the light of Christ can shine on that darkness and expose that sin. But it's not just to expose the sin so the person can feel guilty. His light shines on that darkness to expose that sin and to offer his love and his forgiveness. To offer hope in place of despair. To offer comfort in place of sorrow. To offer healing in place of suffering. To offer wholeness in place of brokenness. So Christ's light exposes sin, but it also exposes his love for the sinner. And he calls us to walk in his ways of love, to reveal to the world the truth that can be found in him, to shine his light in this world today, not to judge others, but to point others to Jesus Christ, to his love, to his mercy, and to his forgiveness, so that their lives can be transformed just as ours have been transformed, so that our society's lives will be transformed, that issues of injustice and poverty and disease will be tackled because we seek to love others as Christ loves us. And we are called to tell others the good news that Jesus loves them unconditionally and that he can offer them new life in him. So this Sunday, may we make a pledge to walk in the ways of love, giving thanks for all that Christ has done for us. And let us shine a light as children of the light, so that others may see the sacrificial, unconditional, eternal love that God has for them in Jesus Christ, and that they would know that light and love in their own lives and in the lives of those around them. Let us join in prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for your unconditional sacrificial love for us on the cross at Calvary. We thank you that your light shines in this world to bring hope and healing and wholeness. Help us, O Lord, as followers of yours, to live a life of love, to walk in your ways, and to shine your light, to transform our lives, the lives of our neighbours, and the lives of our world. This prayer we offer in your name. Amen. So we bring this service to a close as we sing the hymn, Lord, the light of your love is shining. Um, this time we're going to have a recording from the congregation of First Oma. Uh, the last time that we sang this um, will appear, uh, will, um, you'll hear it over the speakers and the words will appear on the screen. Um, I invite you to stand and if you'd like to join in in the singing, please do so.
these are complex times. Let us look carefully how we walk and let us walk in the way of love. Let us receive the wisdom that comes from Christ. And wherever we go, whatever happens, let us give thanks to God in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And may the grace, mercy and peace from God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit be with you today and evermore. Amen. Could I ask you all to take a seat, please? Just want to give uh, some instructions for leaving uh, the church. I'm going to ask the people on this side of the church by the windows if you could stand. People in the centre, please remain seated. People on the right hand side, stand. And when Daryl starts to play, uh, can you move out from your place, being mindful to keep two metres social distance from anyone in front or behind you? Congregation in the centre aisles, you remain seated until I stand again and then it's time for you to stand. Okay. There are hand sanitizers on the, the wall on the way out on the right hand side and on the left hand side. Please follow the arrows and make your way promptly to your car and to your homes. Thank you and God bless.